Finally, brothers in film, Mark and Jay Duplass, chronicle their directing and acting careers in a new book. They sat down with Jeffrey Brown recently in the latest edition of the NewsHour Bookshelf. Something's wrong, guys. In 2005, a film called Puffy Chair both perplexed and transfixed the Sundance Film Festival. It's about two brothers who embark on a road trip to pick up a chair from eBay as a present for their father. I'll give you $2,000 if you keep your mouth shut. It helped introduce a wider film audience to the quirky, low-budget movie making of the writer-director team of Mark and Jay Duplass. The two brothers from the suburbs of New Orleans have made more than two dozen films and television shows together. I hope you worked harder on your calibrations. And largely on their own terms. My calibrations are flipping pinpoint, okay? They not only write, direct, and act in their own projects, but also fund other low-budget independent filmmakers and television, including the recent Netflix documentary series, Wild Wild Country. Among their recent work, the HBO TV series Togetherness, about marriage and friendship. All right, you see? You're a mess. As actors, Jay appeared in Transparent and Mark in The League. Now they've collaborated on a new work, a book about making it as independent filmmakers in Hollywood and trying not to kill each other along the way. It's called Like Brothers. Mark and Jay Duplass joined me recently, and I asked them about thriving outside the Hollywood system. I really feel like we have carved a tiny little corner of the sandbox that is uniquely our own. And if we stay there, we really stay happy. But it was not part of our plan. I think there could be no plan for us. We came from the suburbs of New Orleans with no connections in rigid Catholic schools. And the idea of having a career in the arts was beyond consideration. And when we decided to do it, we sort of locked arms and spirits and souls and, and we sort of began that Sisyphean journey pushing the boulder up the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened is that we realized halfway there that if we were going to be able to make the kinds of things we wanted to make, we weren't gonna be able to do them with other people's money. How do you define even at this point in your life, how do you define what you've been building and doing? We're taught as filmmakers that we're supposed to be auteurs, we're supposed to be dictators, and we're supposed to know everything. My way, right? It's I going know, to be I, my I, way. And, and for And that us, you're somehow less than if you don't have all the answers yeah. in that moment. Yeah. We tried that in we our tried early that. 20s. We, we tried to be the Coen brothers, and yeah. we failed. We're just not as smart or as charming or as funny or as visionary as they are. Just a small piece of advice. Don't try to be the Coen brothers. You will Only fail. the Coen brothers can be the Coen <laughs> yes. brothers. We did have a long period of time where we were trying to be like other filmmakers, and it wasn't until we literally had nervous breakdowns and basically ended up sort of accidentally making a three dollar short film that was something that we had gone through it was a guy trying to perfect the personal greeting of his answering machine fails to do so and it was like this hilarious tragic weird little almost home movie hey it's John sorry I missed your call um just leave me your number I'll get back to you as soon as I can thanks hi it's John Ashford Hello! We took that movie to Sundance uh, and we watched audiences like gasp and laugh their butts off and it, we looked at each other and we're like, I guess this is what we uniquely have to offer the world. This is our voice, it's this make, is who we this are. This yeah. is making fun of our own quiet and pathetic and sometimes loud desperation. That sounds like an accidental life in a way, or career. Yeah, Was it, it hard to find the... The, the voice that you... It was hard yeah. to find. It took us, honestly, about 10 to 12 years of floundering around as young artists in Austin, Texas. Luckily, that's a place you could live on $6,200 a year and, and make weird art and not be a total outlier. We right. had a community that was supportive, you know? And that's what we're trying to do now for younger filmmakers or more experienced filmmakers, you know, where we try and foster them and create the environment where they can create and, and get some of the help that, honestly, we never got because I think we have survivor's guilt is what we're realizing. Survivor's guilt? S survivor's guilt, yeah, because we suffered for so long trying to figure out, you know, what it was that we uniquely had to offer. And what we always tell artists, and part of this is in the book, is, is you know, those strange conversations you have with your sibling or your loved one or your best friend 
uh, in the middle of the night where you're giggling uncontrollably or you're crying about something that's so personal to your experience, that is probably what you uniquely have to offer and that's, that's where you have to start and that's where it all started for us. You write about being offered by Marvel, right, a big budget film and how you rejected them because you, you want the smaller budgets? That's not really our currency. We're not suited to serve that well, honestly. I think they would be disappointed in us, and I think we would be frustrated because we like to make like 10 to 15 projects a year. Yeah. You have to have a unilateral focus for three years, and that just wouldn't make us happy. If we made a superhero movie, I think we'd spend like 12 minutes on the scene where the guy's putting the suit on, and he feels a little fat, and he feels a little self-conscious about it, and then he has to talk to his wife about it, and they have to work up like a level of confidence for him so that he can go out wearing that skin-tight suit. And the right? audience would be saying, what's going on <laughs> with this guy? Put, like, put the suit on. Or maybe, yeah, or, maybe, or maybe they'd love it, you know? Maybe, but, but I think the climax would be she's willing to have sex with him without the suit on and she accepts him as he <laughs> am. And we, we would love it. Yeah, that's the breakthrough we're looking for. Is that a, is that a, a billion dollar box office grocer? Do we feel good? Everybody good? You ready to take that Everybody on? Everybody good with that? Okay, good. Let's do it. Yeah, Let's yeah. do it. So the, the partnership and the approach will continue? Is that the plan? I, you... I think so. I yeah. think we're, we are changing now and we're realizing that this insular two-person codependent collaboration of writing, directing movies in lockstep doesn't work for us right now. And we're expanding that circle, um, not only socially so that we can have wives and children, mm -hmm. but creatively and oh, professionally. Those, huh? those yeah, are yeah, important, yeah. yeah. yeah those. But uh, creatively and professionally, you know, we can go out and, and produce things for younger brother filmmakers like Wild Wild Country. And, and that feels very right to us uh, in a way that feels like we can still be close and support each other but get a little breath of air that doesn't exactly smell like the other one's breath every time. All right, the book is Like Brothers, Mark and Jay Duplass. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. You have to laugh. Online, the Duplass brothers shared three documentaries that touched or inspired them. You can find that at our website, pbs.org newshour.